we so much appreciate, Lord, your presence. And we want to say we appreciate you, Lord. And we love you forever and ever. In Jesus' name. And with love in our hearts, Lord. With love in our hearts, church. Let's give the Lord praise this morning. Just love you. Love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, there's a, there's a flow right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Reach out. Reach out, oh God of heaven. Reach out, God of heaven. Yes. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord, church? Come on, just turn around and greet somebody. Welcome them to church. So good to see you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. Wow, what a presence of the Lord. Well, the Lord bless you, church. What a wonderful day we've had so far. And um, I want to just say we're going to receive a love offering to the Lord. Would you just give, just give into this atmosphere. Let's give to what God is doing in our church right now. So, Lord, we honor you with our giving. Lord, receive it with thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for your blessing upon our church and our families. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. And Amen. Well, church, I want to say it's so good to be back. And um, we had a wonderful time in Australia and New Zealand. Lord moved in a wonderful way. And we're so grateful to see the hand of the Lord upon the meetings. But it's always good to be back home. There's no place like home. And the presence of the Lord that is here. And um, Wednesday night, we had a wonderful encounter with the Lord. And again, this Wednesday, every Wednesday, we're going to be teaching on the Holy Spirit. And we're going to just keep teaching about the Spirit until there's an outpouring. We're going to keep seeking Him until there's an outpouring. And so this morning, again, I want to talk to you about the things of the Spirit. So if we go to Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 15... I want to read to you and then just talk to you about what I feel the Lord is doing at this time and in this hour. And right now, around the world, reports are coming in of a new move of God. And God has us there right at the forefront of it all. And get ready, church. Get ready for the move of God. This is a tsunami. You're going to try and hide. You can, you can run, but you cannot hide. God is going to find our families. He's going to find our lives and touch us. And it's just so wonderful, church. I want you to get hungry for the things of God and to realize sometimes there's things in our lives that take the place of God. But the Lord is making us hungry. And just empty yourself of all these other things. So that there's room for the Lord. Let there be room in your inn for the Lord. Room in the inn for the Lord. And so seek the Lord while he might be found. That's what the Bible says. So I am in Isaiah 32 verse 15. And it says, when the Spirit is poured upon us from on high... And the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is counted as a forest. I want you to see the progression of the things of the Spirit. In other words, we don't have to get stuck at one level. With God, there's always another level. There's always more with God. And so when the Spirit is poured out, I want to say to you, don't get stuck on tongues. I speak in tongues and that's all that I want. No, there's progression with God. It says here, until the wilderness becomes a fruitful field. So when God encounters your life, church, the wilderness begins to change. Your life begins to change. Your thinking begins to change. And fruit begins to develop in your life. 
That field of your life, my life was darkness without Jesus, but encountering Jesus, my life became a fruitful field to the Lord. So, so now, what changes it? It is the Holy Spirit that changes it. When He reigns upon us, the wasteland becomes a fruitful field. But we're not going to stop there. And it says, because it says, the fruitful field becomes a forest. In other words, there's progression and there's depth and there's growth in the things of the Holy Spirit. And as a church, we want to continue to go deeper and deeper and deeper until there's a flourishing of the Holy Ghost in the spirits. Why a forest? Well, a forest is much better than a fruitful field because a forest has everything in it. And the forest is flourishing. It is nourished. There's moisture everywhere. And I want to dare say, church, I am looking at a forest in front of me. The blessing of the Lord is going to be upon us. The rain of the Spirit is going to be upon us and upon your life. And so we are not going to stop at one level. We're not going to stop at a raindrop. We're going to continue until there's a storm of the Holy Spirit. We must continue until there's an outpouring of the Holy Ghost upon our lives. I'm not going to stop at church attendance on a Sunday morning. I'm not going to stop at just one revelation of one scripture. I want to continue until my heart bursts for the Lord. That is where God is taking us and the world right now. So when he's poured out, it's going to be a field and it's going to become a forest. We're continuing in the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until nothing else satisfies you, church. There'll be nothing in your life. No other thing will satisfy you. There'll be no taste except the things of the Lord. You're going to have a distaste for everything that's of this world because you learned it couldn't satisfy you. But there's one who satisfies, and that is the Lord. Amen. So even this, this quietness in our worship, which is new over the last month. This intensity is, is we are in something new because of the dew. The dew, the moisture of the Spirit is forming and is falling. So we're in the new because of the dew. Amen, somebody. I hope you can tweet that or you can exit whatever it is. You can Facebook it. We are in the new because of the dew. Put it in your heart and get ready for the encounter of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, somebody. I want to say to you, our services are no longer services. They are now encounters with the Holy Spirit. We want the presence of the Lord. We want the manifestation of the Holy Ghost amongst us. I want my life, I want your life to be a fruitful field in Jesus' name. Now, I was sharing this this week with our leaders and the prayer team Wednesday night around the dew, how the Lord manifests himself. And it's interesting because the, the word of God says in Hosea, in Hosea 14 from verse 5, it says that God says, I will be like the dew to Israel. And so God manifests in different ways, fire and wind and like a dove. And here we see he comes as the dew. And that's, my, that's not my message this morning, but let me share it with you again so we're all on the same page. Dew comes, the season of dew is just before the rainy season. How much the prophets of the Old Testament have spoken that before the great coming of the Lord, they speak of this outpour of the Spirit. How much do they speak of the rain 
that is coming. How we see the prophet said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. All these things are speaking into an end time move of God, of refreshing. Before the storms comes, there's the season of dew. Dew is that moisture that appears early in the morning on the rooftops, on the plants, on the grass. It's an indication that there is moisture in the air that has appeared. And all that we are sensing now is the moisture of the Spirit is in the air, church. There's something new because of the dew. And this wonderful dew falls under certain conditions. Number one, there must be an open heaven. In other words, God is removing clouds from our lives. Everything that will stop that, that openness between your heart and God's heart to you is being removed. First, there must be an open sky. Secondly, there must be a stillness. Dew does not form when there's turbulence in the air, it, there must be a stillness. It actually forms just in the last hour, just before the sunrise. It's the quietest time of the night. And this quietness that has come into our worship is a move of the Spirit. So that, the, so that the dew of the Spirit can form. The resting of His presence in the room is falling so that we can be touched by Him. That's why this depth has come. And so embrace it and let the Holy Spirit find a resting place upon you. And you just say, Holy Spirit, come and touch my life. And you close your eyes and just embrace the presence of the Lord. <clears throat> and if there be anything, any cloud in your life, you just say, Lord, remove it in my life. Open the heavens above me, O oh God. Now notice how the dew, the sun rises and it shines on the dew drops. And I love this, I love this part of this picture. Let me just show you. I just love this. You see the sun there? Because the dew reflects the glory of the sun. So that God is seen upon us. And the glory of the Lord is seen upon us. So there's a glory coming upon the church. And a victory coming upon the church. And it's the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon us in a brand new way. And then as the sun rises, the dew is evaporated back to the sun. And I wonder, church, if this is not the beginning of an end time move and the catching up of the church to be with the Lord. It's easy. You say, who is going to go to heaven? Everyone that has the glory on them. The gl we reflect His image. We are His. So this is the time. Let me say it again. It's not a time to sing a song. It's a time to worship. Singers and worship worshipers are different there's a different posture upon worshipers worshipers are seekers of his presence singers they sweat and when they go home the sweat dries and there's nothing left worshipers carry the glory of the king there's a difference. So the dew is falling. Now let me show you some of the things that happen when we engage with the Spirit. Verse 5 says, I will be like the dew to Israel 
Then it says, he shall grow like the lily and lengthen his roots like Lebanon. He shall grow like the lily. The lily it was a beautiful flower. In other words, the Lord is beautifying his church. Getting ready for the, the marriage supper of the Lamb. God is beautifying His people with His glory. The dew is bringing refreshing to us. And then it says, and the roots are being lengthened. In other words, God is causing a deep root in Him. So when the storms come, you shall not be moved. You shall not be shaken, for your hope is in the Lord. That is what's happening right now with the dew, the life, the water is falling upon us and bringing life to our lives. Then it says, his branches shall spread. Oh, glory to God. God is causing a spreading out of His church. So I see more campuses being planted. I see more businesses happening. I see your life being spread out with blessings. Hallelujah. Someone just stretch, just say to the person next to you, excuse me, I'm stretching out. Come on, push them aside. Tell them I'm stretching out in the name of Jesus the Lord is stretching your branches your branches your branches hey why must my branch stretch the larger the branch the more fruit I can carry I don't want to be a prune I want to be a fat tree mm. Somebody turn to the next person, I want to be fat. Yes. Oh, by the way, I went back to gym this week. Yeah, it was my first time in 10 years. First time back to gym in 10 years. I want to tell you the best part of it was the smoothie afterwards. <laughs> Say this, God is stretching me. He's taking me out. He's spreading my life. Then it says, your beauty shall be like an olive tree. Woo-wee. Have you ever seen those, that program, you should, I Shouldn't Be Alive? Have you seen that before? It's these guys that for some reason go walking in the desert and get lost and have no water. And seven days, they're walking in the desert Oh, and then they look like prunes. And they are the the sun beating on them. And the blisters. And they would almost have dehydrated and died in the wilderness. And somebody finds them. I'm come to tell you, the Spirit has found you. And He's raining upon you. And the oil, the olive oil, is being spread on your skin and is renewing your beauty. Oh, yes. There's a special oil of the Holy Spirit that's coming upon our faces. So we're going to shine and reflect the glory of the Lord. That weathering that's happened in your life, God is about to restore you. That weathering that happened because of the storm, God is about to restore you. Somebody say, beauty is coming to my life. Where did this all start? With the dew, the presence. In fact, the presence is the Lord himself in the room. His beauty shall be like an olive tree and his fragrance like Lebanon. (laughs) You're going to smell good. You walk into a room, the fragrance grows with you favor goes with you oh yes you walk into a place people and then go what just came in the room the glory of the Lord is upon you oh yes have you noticed how a good smell can change the atmosphere so your atmosphere is changing your environment is changing 
on, just, just sniff the person next to you and say, you're smelling good today. You're smelling really good today. What is it? It must be the glory of the Lord. It must be the dew of heaven. It must be the presence of the Lord. Now you go out of this service, you're going to smell good. People and say, what perfume do you have? You're going to say, Acts. <laughs> it's the presence of the Lord is upon me. Come on, turn to somebody and tell them the presence of the Lord. It's changing my atmosphere. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Those who dwell under his shadow shall return. They shall be revived like grain. I love this grain. Have you seen these towers they have? You travel down to Durban, they have these, these towers, these silos. They fill them with grain. Like Joseph collected the grain in silos for the people. We are in the season of collecting. Collect as much as you can. It's the season to collect. It's the season of plenty now. Collect what you can. Now, why the grain? Because it means that wherever you go, you bring bread. You bring life. When the glory is on you, you see what you're going to bring the life of the Spirit and the bread of heaven. You cannot hide fresh bread. Have you ever got into a car and someone brought a fresh loaf of bread and you get in, you go, ooh, there's bread in the car. How many of you have ever had your kids in the car and before you're home, the bread was finished? Or you finished it? How many of you know what I'm talking about right now? Nothing better, nothing better than bread in the house. God is going to make you a refreshing to others. Wherever you go, they'll be refreshed. You walk into a wilderness and the wilderness begins to live. The valley of Baca shall bloom. The valley of Baca shall flourish. Why? Because of you. Because of you. Of your life. Glory to God. No longer will you come to church withered and weary. You will come. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why? I'm going into life. I'm going into prosperity. I'm going into blessing, into extension in every way. That's the presence of the Lord. Somebody, somebody say amen. Amen. And you shall grow like a vine. Let's go to verse 8. We're going to verse 8. And... Let's just go straight to the Amplified Bible. We'll read it in the Amplified version on the screen together. Let's read it together. Here we go. O Ephraim, what more have I to do with idols? Now, number one, let me say this to you. This move of God is going to remove every false worship from our lives. Addictions are leaving. Brokenness is leaving. Purity is coming. Idols are falling, powers are broken, curses are broken in the presence of the Lord. Just leave the verse on for me. And so it says, uh, what have I had to do with idols? Next part, let's read together. It is I, oh, it's the Lord, church. When he, I, I was reading this, I think it's in John 17. Jesus prayed. He says to the Father, you are in me. And I am in them. I don't know if we can comprehend that in the human mind. The God who spoke into the world, aligned the planets, and calls billions of stars by name. Jesus says the Father dwells in, in him and he in us. Oh, the fullness of God, the fullness of God. That's your inheritance. That is our position. You are seated in heavenly places with Christ. Hallelujah. This is who we are. So now it says here, let's read on. Uh, God says, I, it's the Lord. Oh, this is what I wanted to say to you. 
when the Lord's presence falls in worship, it is God in the room. God is in the room. When we acknowledge Him, His presence intensifies. When we say, welcome, Holy Spirit, we're not saying, welcome, you are welcome, because God is far. We're not saying, oh, you're welcome. No, He's omnipresent, He's here. When I say you are welcome, I'm saying you are welcome in my heart. That's why you can be in the same room and God encounters another person and the person next to them has nothing. Because it's not did he come, it is did he come. He has the welcome. He has the welcome. So the Lord says, it is I who have answered and will care for you and watch over you. Glory to God. I am like a luxuriant cypress tree. With me, your fruit is found. Let me read that again. Say, with me, your fruit is found. Or you can say, with you, my fruit is found. You looked for it in a relationship and you didn't find it. Oh, you looked for it in money. Did you not read that scripture that says, money makes for itself wings and flies away? Hmm. Yeah, you looked for it in a car and then you crashed it. Hmm. You looked for it in a jacket and somebody stole it. Hmm. I want to say to you, where it is, it is with him. The fruit you've been looking for is with him. A fruit that does not wither. Oh, it does not spoil. It does not change. A fruit that will satisfy. A fruit that bears fruit in every season in your life. That's the fruit you've been looking for. It's with the Lord God Almighty. That's where it is. You thought you would find it in power, but you found another was more powerful than you. Mm, you thought you would find it in position, and then you got retrenched. Mm, you thought you would find it in something, but I want to say to you, my God is the solid rock upon which I build my life. It will never change, never change. What you're looking for is with Him. See, this is the thing with malnutritioned people. I, I saw this documentary. They went to the, the world, Second World War, and they found the prisoners of war. Did you know, and I forget the number, but they killed a lot of their own people because they tried to feed them fatty food because they were so sick. It caused diarrhea, and the little strength they had left and they died. So they had to give them a little bit of soup to build strength in them. Because they were so ill. You would think you want to just eat like, you know, KFC. It killed them. Some people are so spiritually mal malnutritioned. And I'm saying to you, just stay in anointed services. Just stay in anointed services. Soon your appetite is going to come back. Very soon it's coming back. Oh, you won't be satisfied with just one. No, one service. You won't be satisfied with just a little worship. But you're going to want to go into His presence and drink of the Lord. Spiritual sickness has caused that. The Lord is shifting it. He's changing it. So it's with Him, church. It's with the Lord. What you're looking for is with the Lord. Oh, we're reading it in the Amplified Bible. Then it says this, which is to nourish you. It is to nourish you. The Lord is nourishing us. He's filling us. Oh, yes, church. Even now, hearts are changing. Even now, hearts are like, whoo. I'm liking what I'm hearing. What is that? It's the little bit of soup going down. Yes, strengthening you. See, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. How do you, how do you get a, 
a dead bone out of a dog's mouth. You offer him a fresh bone full of meat. Some of us are satisfied with dead bones. But God is coming with dew and showing us there's something more beautiful. You can eat of him and he will satisfy your life and change your life. Hallelujah. How many of you are hungry for a move of the Spirit of God? Come on, just lift your hand, raise your hand. Say, Holy Spirit, I invite you into my heart. Change my life. Change my family. Water me. Fall upon me. Rain upon me. Dew of heaven. Find a resting place on me. Just keep your hand raised and say, Lord, I give you my heart. Every area of my life that's not pleasing to you, I give it to you now. Let the clouds over my life be removed now in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, for a fresh move of God. Let's stand to our feet, church. Let's stand to our feet. And one, just for 30 seconds, raise both hands to heaven. And here we are, Lord. We say, take our lives and rain upon us. Now let the rain come upon your life now in the name of Jesus. Let the watering of heaven fall upon your heads now in the name of Jesus. Just drink of the spirits. Open your spirit and let the waters come in. Let the rivers wash into your soul now in the name of Jesus. Oh, Holy Ghost, rest upon each person now. 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 Now, there it comes. Let a gentleness come. Let him visit your life. Let him stand right beside you. Right now, he's talking to you. Hearts are changing. Hearts are mending. Minds are being renewed. He's beautifying and he's turning that wasteland into a beautiful lily. Now, in Jesus' name, let tiredness lift from you now in the name of Jesus. Tiredness, go. Weariness, go in the name of Jesus. Right now, every attack of the enemy, go in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for a new season of refreshing upon every person here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, just while every eye is closed, you've come into this place, but Jesus is not your Lord and Savior. I'm not asking you if you were born in a Christian home. I'm not asking you to join a church. I'm asking you, have you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ? It doesn't matter who you are, but if there's a knocking at the door of your heart right now, that's the Holy Spirit that's speaking to you. The Bible says, choose this day whom you will serve. Make a choice, an eternal choice. We all live for eternity. It just depends where. And the Lord is calling people now to make these decisions. In just a moment, I'm going to count to three. I'm going to say one, two, three. And if you need to make a choice for Jesus Christ, then I'm going to invite you to do that by raising your hand and waving it at me. And then we pray a prayer together. Are you ready? One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. See your hand, thank you, see your hand. Thank you, I see your hand, thank you, thank you. Thank you, I see your hand over there. Wherever you might be, thank you, Lord. Let's all pray this prayer. You raise your hand, let's pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Come into my heart. Wash me and cleanse me. I surrender all to you. Lord Jesus, take hold of me and mold me, change me. Today, I make you the Lord of my life and I bow my knee at the cross. You are my Savior. I love you. And teach me your ways. Holy Spirit, seal me now, I pray in Jesus' name.
And everybody said, Amen.